Howdy, y'all. This is William Ferry. I'm running for Justice of the Peace in Precinct 2 in Kendall County. This is the first in a series of videos I decided to make so that you, the people of Kendall County, especially Precinct 2, uh, get to know me as a person, know where I stand on some of these issues that are blowing up online, uh, and just uh, uh, so you can have a better idea of who uh, you possibly could be voting for. Uh, a lot of the issues online, growth, explosive growth, ridiculous growth. We all know this and we're going to discuss it and you're going to know where I stand. Uh, what else is on there? There's traffic, there's the roads, there's water, there's flooding. I'm going to make videos on each of those. Uh, but today I want to discuss uh, the most frequent question that I get asked on the street when I tell people that I'm running and that is what are the duties and responsibilities of the justice of the peace. I know most people know, well, I can marry people and I deal with traffic tickets, uh, things like that. But there's a lot more that goes into it. So let's go ahead and get started right now. Number one, the JP is the presiding officer over the justice court and a small claims court. So just like you see on TV, uh, Judge Judy or the people's court, boom, you got the idea. Uh, We'll get a little bit more into that as they are also part of the Justice Court, and I'll name that number two. Number two, JP has jur jurisdiction over small claims that are less than or equal to $20,000, and they have jurisdiction over Class C misdemeanors. Uh, let me give you an example of Class C misdemeanor. I made a note, so don't be surprised I'm looking at a little bit of notes. But these are just four that I picked out so you can kind of know. So things like uh, driving without a valid license, theft under $100, public intoxication, uh, disorderly conduct. Those are Class C misdemeanors. Uh, and that is what you may come to the JP court to deal with. Number three. The Justice of the Peace can issue arrest and search warrants. Now, this is a sticky one, and I'm already seeing something blow up online. Maybe not blow up online, but someone mentioned something about it. Um, I'm going to be making two separate videos about this. I think this is important because when you're signing uh, arrest warrants and search warrants, uh, you need to be on your game. You can't be uh, messing around. So the two, thing, two videos I will be making uh, about this are where I stand on arrest warrants and search warrants. And another sticky subject under that is the DUI blood draw. Uh, some people agree with it, some people don't. And I'll be making uh, separate videos about that. Number four, the JP has jurisdiction over suspending a driver's license. So if you are in a situation where your license may be suspended, it, once again, we can cover that in the justice court. Number five, as I mentioned before, the Justice of the Peace can perform marriage ceremonies. I think long and hard before you get married, but if you want to, you can come to the Justice Court. Number six, the JP is the notary public for the precinct. Uh, I imagine that people, and I've seen it, people walk into the to the uh, uh, JP's office and have a notar uh, need a, a notary done and the justice does it for him and I'm sure there's some issues or, or ways that they have to do it for the county also. So he is a, uh, a notary public for the precinct. Number seven, what I mentioned before is there are numerous, numerous, numerous uh, administrative and financial duties uh, that the JP has to deal with. They have to do deal with the budgets for their office. Um, they have to take care of, you know, fines just don't go to his office and disappear. You have to take care of the money that goes there. The, the, the JP has a, a clerk that uh, helps him deal with things like that. Um, but it's, it's a lot of paperwork. Uh, so in doing all these responsibilities, uh, you, you're going to come to find out this is not the easiest job in the world. And you, once again, you need to be on your game if you're going to be doing this job. Number eight, the justice of the peace deals with truancy. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, this is one of those areas where everybody is a person. You know, there's different reasons why uh, uh, truancy occurs, and you have to be able to take each case one by one 
Uh, you just can't blank it and make decisions that way. So it's, it, that is one uh, that I thought was very important, along with uh, the next one also. Number nine, just so the piece deals with evictions. Now, I know during, while we were in the pandemic, there was certain statutes that were put out on uh, who could get evicted, who couldn't get evicted more uh, likely. Uh, recently, the Supreme Court has made a decision that that is over. Uh, of course, the current administration uh, is finding a way to try and get around that. Uh, my job, my job, as a justice of the peace, would be to follow statutes on that. Uh, there's not much more that goes into that, but once again, this is a case by case basis on things that happen like that. But uh, there are statutes that are in place that you can follow and uh, that's what the justice of the peace would do number 10 this is an important one that i learned as i was uh studying for the job uh kendall county doesn't have a coroner and so when a county doesn't have a coroner that responsibility falls on the justice of the peace now there are four jps here because we have four precincts and we all share the duty but it's one of those duties that's kind of a strange one. And in talking to a couple of the JPs, uh, they were like, yeah, this is, uh, I wouldn't say they said it was a weird one, but it was a, a, a very important responsibility that uh, a lot of counties don't have to deal with. So in saying that, uh, if there's a traffic accident and someone dies, if someone uh, passes at the emergency room, this is something that the, the justice of uh, the peace would have to uh, take into consideration, uh, have and have to deal with. And finally, number 11. And this one is, is a pretty important one with the world we're living in today. Uh, the justice of the peace has magistrate duties. So not only do they work in their own office, but... I, let me speak for uh, Precinct 2. I know that the current JP has magistrate duties on a Monday morning. So he goes to the jailhouse and uh, does that. Now, this has to deal with bail. Okay. I think it goes without saying that if you have a possible felon in the jail and they're coming uh, in front of you uh, to see if they can get released or see where the bail is set, if they're a flight risk, if they're a problem to the, uh, could be a possible danger to the public, I think, like I said, that goes without saying, they're going to get bailed. No one's getting released like that, not in Kendall County. You must be crazy if you think that's going to happen. But uh, you look at case by case. Everything is case by case, so you always have to go back to the law. So you hate to say something like that and, you know, but if some if there's a danger to the public or there's a flight risk, sorry, buddy, it ain't happening. So there you go. Those were the top 11 things I thought were uh, it, the most important things that I believe are uh, some of the duties and responsibilities of the justice of the peace. And I want that to set a foundation. Uh, so at least, you know, uh, when you are voting. Uh, this coming early voting starts February 14th through the 25th, and the vote, uh, the election is on uh, March 1st. So I want you to go in there. I want you to be knowledgeable. I want you to pick the right person. Hopefully you feel that person is me. But like I said, we're going to have a lot more videos so that you can make a better educated uh, decision in the voting box. If you feel that there is a subject that you want, talked about or that you want to know about me put it in the comments below don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button that way i